So you lived in Alberta as well. Yeah. Right now, I ran a newspaper in Carson for five months. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. What was the name of the newspaper? It was called the West Wind News back then. Back then. It's got a different name now. It's a whole, you know, things, yeah. lots of things have changed. There was actually two newspapers there for a while in that little town. Okay. Um, maybe even three. I don't know. But back then there was only one. I took my two artists. We moved out there. Uh, George, uh, um, George Raymond and Claude saint Claude Claude uh, saint uh had started coming to church with us in Winnipeg. And uh, in Cardston, not long after we got to Cardston, he came up to me uh, in, in the in the newspaper office where we worked, and he said, uh, "Richard, you know them discussion things you tell me about. You think I could take them?" So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, good, That's wonderful, amazing. yeah. He, and uh, you've had quite an influence on a lot of people. Yeah. Well, he um, he was a wonderful person to teach. I mean. He, he fasted, he prayed, he read everything, um, and he still, he, he's always been a devout member ever since that time, you know what I mean? He had his son go on a mission to Korea, and, and uh, anyway, so. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, uh, so I wanted to, then <clears throat> we were there for five months. Uh, we realized that we couldn't make enough income from the newspaper to feed all of us. So we moved up to Calgary. We worked together for a short while. Then uh, we all went our separate ways. George went back to Winnipeg. Claude and I stayed in Calgary, but we got jobs as commercial artists for different companies. And uh, and then in and that was in seventy seven. And in seventy eight, I found an investor to start the comic book again. So in early nineteen seventy nine, we started, uh, you know, publishing the comic book series again. And we published uh, uh, seventy nine and eighty. Um, we did what eleven issues during that period, and I and I was able to get George and Claude back in, working with me again, uh, and um, so and then it that ended in in late nineteen eighty. Uh, had just didn't get I I did not see very eye to eye with the, my two business partners, and um. So, anyways, to make a long story short, it ended, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, in and then I did another magazine, very just two issues of a compilation magazine called Star Writer and a Peace Machine, uh, and then and I was just doing commercial art. I start I did a few children's books. Uh, then we moved to Ontario in 1985, and I did uh, when we came to Ontario. I did children's books, greeting cards, and advertising, of course, um, and that's primarily what I did. And I was still self-employed, so I did that until '93, and then in '93 I I did Captain Canuck again for a short while again. So yeah, you're right. It is it is kind of a sporadic thing. Yeah. So just kind of, whenever there's a, it seems like a good opportunity to to do some more. You do. Yeah. You'll do I more. mean, it's all. It's all economics, you know what I mean? It's yeah. when I was able to get the investors and and get the, the financial backing, then I was able to publish it because I was doing my own publishing. When I when I first started in in back in nineteen seventy three, I actually had some interest in you know, my first my first thought was, well, you know, find a publisher for, you know, to do the Captain Connect series. And I actually had a meeting with somebody from Harlequin Romance who came to Winnipeg, met with me, and said they would be interested in publishing it. Oh, and, wow. I, and Yeah, and so I said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, and, but, it, now, the stipulations were that I needed to move to Toronto, and of course, you know, they would own it. Yeah. That didn't really bother me, those two stipulations, because I didn't know enough. But there was this accountant that worked at um, at JD Products who said to me, no, 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 don't do not do that. He said, you need to set up your own publishing company. You need to own all the rights yourself. 
and he and and he said I'm sure we can get government money. You might have to publish it at a Churchill, Manitoba, but we'll get some government grants or something. Never did. Never did get any money. But he, you know, he had me believing that that was the way I need to go. And so I reject, you know, I didn't, didn't continue communicating with Harlequin and just moved on and decided I would set up my own publishing operation. So. What you, uh, what you did? Yeah, which, this was, is, which is what I did. Is that I, the... the Comedy com Comics. Comedy Comics. Yeah. Okay. So I just basically self-published it. Wow. wow. And I believe at the time that I published Captain Canuck, somebody said it was the only independently published full-color comic book series published anywhere, not just in North America, but as far as they knew the world. You see, it, in those days... There was Marvel, there was DC, there was Charlton publishing comic books. I mean, over in Europe, you had, it's a whole different system there. They would, comic books are always, they weren't printed as comics. They were printed as books. Mm -hmm. They were um, it, like Tain Tain and all those other uh, comic book series over there. It was done every, what, every month. There was two pages in a magazine. And eventually after the story was told, they would put it together as a hardcover book. Or or and soft cover book, you know mm -hmm. that's how that was their model over in Europe, and uh, but I was publishing a full color comic book uh, independently. I, I wasn't it wasn't Marvel, wasn't DC, wasn't Charlton, uh, I see. and and I was the only person doing that apparently. I think most other people realize it was <laughs> it was too risky a venture to, but I wasn't. I was too ignorant to realize that. Because if I would have done enough research, I probably would have come to that conclusion myself. You know what I mean? Did you run into trouble uh, because of Yeah. That? Well, I didn't. Um, I mean, the, the, the mistakes I made were um, my printing costs were way too high. I We ended up printing down in the States because we ended up using the same printer all the other comic book publishers were using because they were a third the price of what we were paying in Canada. That's how dr drastically the difference was. Wow. Because they're set up to do it. Yeah. yeah. And they, and they, they, anyways, um, so, you know, the other, the other mistakes I made where I printed too many copies of number one, they eventually all sold, but over a, a long period of time, we ended up bagging comics. Uh, what I ended up doing too is that I would, you see, the way comic books or all magazines were distributed back then was on the mass market the direct market or the the comic book stores were just beginning in the middle of the 70s there was one store in winnipeg and and there was maybe two stores in all of canada he was like one of two stores there might have been three you know what i mean uh maybe there was one in, in i didn't know about them but uh, i only knew him and because i know he bought thousands of copies of my first issue uh, for example, would people like mail in to order from him? No, they, they, he had a store downtown Winnipeg. Oh, and it was that. Yeah, that much traffic. Uh, yeah, into the store. Yeah, he got wow. he he did quite well. Doug Slip is his name. He's still in business. Uh, now he just just focuses on mail order. But he was one of the pioneers of you know the comic book shop. He had that little store downtown Winnipeg, and and there was only a handful of them in all of North America back then. There was very few of them. Eventually, there were there's thousands now. It was actually uh, the, the, it, probably around uh, 1990 is with the peak. There was probably twice as many as there are today. There's probably in North America there might be three or four thousand. You know what I mean? That back then there might have been seven thousand in say 1990. Yeah. But um, but anyways, Doug Slip he bought thousands of copies of issue number one from me. I didn't know this till later on, but he sold a thousand copies in one day. <laughs> and and people were lined up for two blocks oh my to, just to buy a copy. Wow! That, that, so I had no idea he was doing that well with these. You know I mean? So who was who was uh, doing all the marketing? Me. Like how did all these people that were lining up? How did they know about Captain news media? Canuck? News media coverage just from the interviews. Yeah. And the, uh, yeah. News. I did articles. a lot of those. Wow. I, you know, like I said, and I got paid for some of them or most of them. <laughs> I mean, uh, and now to set up those interviews, like, did, were they kind of knocking on your door, or were you well, you were initially calling them? Well, you know what I learned 
early on, um, I learned that I, well, first of all, when I first published, it was just Winnipeg media that picked up on it and then national media picked up on it. And then we decided, I decided that, you know, I needed to promote it some more and I realized I could get a lot of media coverage. So I went to Toronto for the first time in my life in, that would have been early 1976, went to tr Toronto and Ottawa and Montreal and held press conferences there. And so I sent out a press release. I had learned how to write a press release. We sent it out to the media and I would go to those cities. And they decided and do, they, they want to cover yeah. the story. They'd send somebody down. Yeah. And, 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 I, yeah. and media there was, you got tons of media coverage in all of those places. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it was all good. Um, and that's what that was my promotional budget. I didn't really have any other any expense with my traveling, you know, to those places. You know, during uh, you know I, I was doing greet as I mentioned I was doing greeting cards and ads. I also did two newspaper features. I, I mentioned I did children's books. I did something mm -hmm. like thirteen children's books. I did one called uh, I um. Well, I did something for, uh, I worked on a Wayne Gretzky project way back in the early 80s. And I got to know a lawyer and his wife. And she and I, um, well, she she had this idea for a children's series called Trumpet. Trumpet the Elephant. And I ended up in 86 doing a newspaper feature called Trumpet and Friends Fun Stuff. Mm -hmm. It was a weekly feature. And it very quickly became the most syndicated Canadian feature uh, around. It was I, I, I was dealing with Sun Media back then. They've since sold their Sun Media sold their syndicate to I don't know ten years ago or more. More I can't remember when. Uh, Fifteen years ago, yeah. but anyways. So I uh, and we did a uh, trumpet. We did a hardcover children's book. And we did an activity book that both did very well. And the interesting thing is that we now Trumpet is being considered for a possible animated series. Oh wow! So and That's that, another thing. Wow. Yeah, and well, what's interesting about that is that the son of Zelda Zitzerman, who you know, who I co-created Trumpet with, is one of the top two entertainment lawyers in Canada. Wow. So that's how that's evolved. You know what I mean? So now, you know, he, he's kind of taken it on as a personal project to see, you know, if we can make it an animated series. So I did another one called Wabbits for about a year, another newspaper uh, strip. Uh, it, um, I didn't, I just didn't have enough newspapers to make it worthwhile. But uh, I, I thought, I mean. You've been all over, really. Yeah. Um Newspaper strips don't make much. Are very. Are, it's gotten to be a really tough business because newspapers are kind of fading away. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, Wabbits, um, I had uh, high hopes for for Wabbits. Uh, it's about a family of rabbits that move into a new town, and their next door neighbor is uh, uh, Mr. BB Wolf. And, uh, <laughs> so. But but it's, it's oh that'd be an interesting comic. <laughs> okay, so this is a but this is a whole new world. It's a more civilized world where where wolves really don't eat rabbits anymore. But <laughs> har habits are hard to break okay. you know, with, with some people. So oh. that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you did the writing as well for that. Yeah, I mean it was it was a gag at eight type of uh, <laughs> strip. So oh, that's good. Oh, here it is. There. Wabbits. Yeah. <laughs> One big happy family. Yeah. Hoppy. <laughs> hoppy family. Oh, hoppy. One, sure. one big hoppy family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wolf fleas. Oh, look at that. So. That's funny. The, the, the first four here, you know what I mean? So here, this strip here kind of tells, tells it all. Hello, Mr. Wolf. I'm Dan Wabbit. <laughs> I wanted the kids to meet you. You won't believe this. They have this crazy idea that modern-day wolves still like to eat rabbits. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Wolf, but you're drooling on my new hush puppies. 
<laughs> oh boy. Anyhow. So that's, that's I only did it for a year. It just, that's fantastic. Well, uh, you know what? I I was thinking that it might be helpful if I got say the IDW big thick book because it has the early issues in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, okay, let me just yeah, let me positive. just get it. Okay. So, uh, you have here. This is the complete edition, Captain Canuck, the complete edition. It's this humongous thick book. And what is this? Is this all of the issues? All <clears> in that one? is the original series, pl uh, plus uh, one of the, the latest episode uh, from uh, Captain Cut Legacy. That's I Legacy. That's a, a more, much more recent. But all of this stuff is from. This is all the seventies. <clears throat> Seventy. Well, 70, uh, 79, 80. Most oh, okay. of, a lot of it. Seventy nine eighty. Okay. Seventy five, seventy six at the beginning, and then. Um, that's the original series. That what we refer to as the original series. Is there an evolution here? Like where, I guess, an evolution of your writing and evolution oh, yeah. of the art. I mean, oh is yeah. There, uh... It we got better and better. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And and uh, you know, bringing George on board really helped. At first, he w he inked for me. He inked number three for me, and then he drew number four. Yeah. And then and then after that, he did most of the art. I wonder what goes into the production. Is it a ton of work to just put out one issue? Is there? It's a fair amount of work. Yeah, I mean, you have to write the story, and then you have to. It, basically, the way it's done is you write the story, uh, then you the the artist does it all in pencils first, and then he'll ink it, and then it's all scanned and colored in Photoshop. In those days, we colored it with a with our acetate overlay method. Yeah. So. You know, that's all acetate overlay, which the the advantage of using that system was that when I first was looking at comic books in 1975, you had a very limited palette of colors. It was all flat color. And right. this gave us the ability to have gradated tones and highlights and, and as an unlimited palette. So I have to show you, a, uh, I'd have to show you a comic book from... Uh, that era that was colored, you know, the typical method. Actually, yeah, these so, look like kind of old style, yeah, comic pages. Where like flipping into the later portions of the book, well, it's, well you can see quite a difference. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's still it's still the same coloring method. We just got better at coloring too. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But, wow. But that's great. only the, only the back end stuff is uh, Photoshop coloring. Yeah, like th this is all Photoshop coloring. This one here. Yeah, do you find that uh, with Photoshop, it's just so much less work? Uh, no, it, it it's not actually an awful lot of less work. It just gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more um, control. But uh, it can can it could speed it up a a little bit. I I don't think it really sped up the process all that much. Mm -hmm. So yeah. The first they publish this is IDW, this is American company. They publish first these two hardcover editions and then they everything and then everything plus a little bit more got put out in that. And these issue. are all these are all available in stores? Uh, uh these are now? sold out. They, so, oh really? Yeah, you can't get these anymore. And this one is in its second printing and I don't know how you know, how well the second printing is done at this point, but the first printing sold out, so they've done very well. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, take us to the present. Uh, what's what's happening? Uh, you were t you were mentioning that you're under a huge time crunch right now for this uh, new edition uh, yeah. uh, coming out. What to, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we decided, I guess a few months ago, that we would do a Captain Canuck Canada Day edition. And and uh, I wish we would have started working on it about two or three months earlier than we have. It's not so much the content. I mean, it's been written. The art is well on its way to being completed. But there's so much other stuff that has to be done because we are publishing it ourselves. But we've got kind of a unique distribution plan for this. We're going to be, uh, it's going to be distributed through public libraries as well as comic book stores. Oh, okay. So getting that all of that arranged, the print, uh, the, um, well, 
the distribution, you know, the mechanics, the logistics of getting it distribu distributed, uh, and ad space sales again, you know, because a lot of the fun the funding for this is coming through ad sales, and and that that is her our starting late has been a, a real detriment in that aspect because we're running into a lot of companies that are, have already spent their budget. You know what I mean? Right, right. When should we expect these on the shelves? Uh, June 28th. Canada Day comes at a specific time, so we have what is called a hard deadline to meet. So you this can't is come not out a soft deadline. July 2nd just doesn't cut it. No, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it, it, it's designed to, it'll first appear in stores on June the 28th, or stores and libraries. Most libraries aren't open on Canada Day. I don't think there's any that are open on Canada Day. So they're going to be giving it out uh, on June the 28th, which is a, a Saturday. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. There, there'll be a few. <clears throat> there are some a few smaller chains uh, that are going to be distributing them around that same time, too. And some of those are open on Canada Day, and they will be distributing them on Canada Day. But you know, and they may they may do it on June the twenty eighth as well. Yeah, that's sort of up to them. But well, that's super. I'll be looking. I'll be looking on the yeah. store shelves. And, yeah. Uh, and, well, uh, it, it, yeah, it'll it, it it's designed that it'll be a very short distribution window, and since most of these places are giving it away, uh, we expect them to go fairly quickly. Yeah. Over those few days, uh, and uh, so. I mean, there will be comic book stores that will hold back copies. They won't give them all away. They'll hold them back and sell them later on. In they, fact, they become collectors later on. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and we the other thing we've done. This is just for the comic book stores. We've got a few alternate covers, which is done a lot nowadays in comic book publishing. And it's all about collectability, of course. Special edition covers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So oh, that's we're, cool. so comic book stores are will get a couple of. Um, alternate covers, the same content inside, but they'll have different covers. And those, they will, we're telling them, those are the ones in particular that'll be more collectible, you know, rather than the the, the, the main cover, yeah. and, which they'll keep some of those too, you know what I mean? So, I've seen that there was a web series done. The Talk web... a bit about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the web series, I didn't have a lot to do with it, quite honestly. That was about a year ago, a year and a quarter ago, I made an agreement with Fatty Hakim and uh, a, a licensing agreement. And uh, they had already started, you know, kind of working on the animated series because we were already in discussion. But we formalized our agreement, uh, I believe it was in February of last year, uh, we formalized an agree a licensing agreement. And, and Fatty and I had been talking about it for well over a year before that point yeah and about you know so they did the animated series it's just five parts they're only short episodes about four minutes each and they're all now all five are available it, it covers the whole story arc um it, and they're all available at captainconduct.com now so anybody can see them now yeah so. Yeah, and those will be repackaged in other ways too. You know what I mean? And are they planning to do more? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I looked at I looked at them. They're pretty cool. Yeah, no, <laughs> I pretty cool. And and the, I think it's I'm I'm amazed they got some pretty uh, big names involved here with the yeah. uh, the the voice actors. I know, and that was all Fatty Hakim. I mean, he yeah. turned out to be quite a producer, uh, and he had a lot of contacts and connections and friends in the business. And uh, yeah, he did a great job putting all that together. Chris, yeah, Chris Holden Reed from uh, from Lost Girl. Same yeah. with Paul Amos, also yeah. from Lost Girl. Yeah. Laura Vanderroot. She's yeah. Uh, she, you know, she's a big name. Yeah. She's in in a series called Bitten, which has been picked up for a second season because it did so well the first season. Yeah. yeah. And she played Supergirl in uh, yeah, Smallville. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah which pretty... is was a very very popular series. Tatiana Maslany. Yeah, and she's a big name now too. She, yeah. She's yeah. in that. Um, Orphan Black, Orphan Black series, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's quite, yeah, this yeah. Is I know, cool. <laughs> big names. I know. It was all thanks to Fatty. Yeah, he he was able to get all those people on board, and they um they were all keen to do it. So 
Are, are they pretty true to the original characters? Oh, and yeah. Everything? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, the, the, the thing about Fatty and, and another person we should mention, Paul Gardner, who is a creative director uh, on that series, um, and Paul is a producer for Bell, but uh, no, they, they did a great job. All my my role in it was other than my little cameo in the first I th- episode. I thought that looked like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did notice there was that. What did, what were you saying there? Is that a bomb or yeah, something like that? Or? I know. <laughs> I had to say it like twenty times where they were happy with it. But uh, they yeah. they um no, I I mean all my other than that little bit. I I just approved things, you know. I, mean, I approved the scripts, and and I was pretty happy with everything I saw, so I had no problems. I I didn't, and you know, I didn't I didn't need to ask them to temper anything down that they were being, uh, you know, they're very, you know, they have the same I guess um, uh, ideals that I do about the character and 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 not being violent and all of that, and they're very true to that. And and that was from day one, you know. I, I gave them my my views and my position on that, and they said no problem. We feel the same way, and uh, yeah. So that worked. That's worked out very good so far. He doesn't want to beat you up, but if he has to, yeah, he can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he apologizes afterwards too. You know what I mean? So, um, can you talk a little bit about the movie? There's uh there's this yeah. rumor that's going around that there's this uh, feature length. Uh, live action film coming. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk well, let me that. before I get into the movie, I should also mention that there is a comic book series in the works as well. So okay. besides the the Canada Day annual, we're going, we're planning to do the Canada Day edition every year from now on. But there is a comic book series in the making, uh, and that's uh, uh, Kalman and and Zdrowski is going to be doing at least the first arc. You know the first five or six episodes he'll be doing of that, and he's doing all the art and most of the writing on that too. So, uh, I mean, it's still in progress in 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 process, but uh, that's co- definitely coming. Don't have a firm date on on when that's going to be uh, released. The um, the the feature film, uh, I actually Captain Canuck was optioned years ago. To a few different people, I think the first option agreement I made for anything was in '97, and that only was like an 18 months option. And then I had a another shorter option with another uh, company. Then uh, for uh, four and a half years, I had an option agreement with a company called Sinking Ship, out of Toronto, and they do a lot of children's programming. They're a great group of people, and they do. Uh, uh, you know they do great stuff. Um, they have I don't know four or five different TV series on right now, and and unfortunately it didn't pan out where they just weren't quite able to put it all together. Uh, and then I made an agreement with a company called Mind's Eye, and with the intent of doing a feature film, uh, and that was almost three years ago that I made the agreement with them. And we, at this point, that first draft has been written by Arnie Olson, mm-hmm. Vancouver-based Arnie Olson. And he's a, he's a good guy. I met with him and talked with him often. And he and I worked together, you know, on the, um, on the treatment for the, the, the script. And he's written the first draft of the screenplay, which I think we all agree is, is quite, is there. You know what I mean? It's, He's he's got a really good sense of of it, and uh, and and he's he's written a great script, and we're about to go into second draft, and of course, the way films are made, at least here in Canada, it's pretty systematic because there's often a lot of government funding and government agencies involved in one step or another. Telefilm, of course, is already. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they paid for the first draft, and uh, or they they provided funding for the first draft. A lot of these agencies are partially funded by government that support film production in Canada. Yeah. So yeah, you you know, typically everybody works with them, unless you've got finances from somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. but it, yeah, I think all going well. We're we're here 
in in late May of 2014. We could see it going into production. I would say in a year from now. Yeah. And it nice. might it might be a little more than a year. It might be late summer of next year. It could be in production, and it could be in theaters in 2016. Yeah, just sort of the nature of how movies are made. It takes yeah. time and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, that's exciting, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and it'll be made in Canada, solely by Canadians. You know, there, there'll be one or two Americans in there, but uh, it'll but really be... All Canadian act, mostly Canadian actors yeah. there and, and all that stuff. But, you know, there's lots of leads... You know, there's there's Ryan Reynolds, there's Ryan Gosling, there's Ryan, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of Canadians that are big names that yeah. we can we can shortlist, lots of them, you know. So it's not like we're being hamstrung in any way that, I mean, they're all working down in the States now, of course, but they're still Canadian born. Yeah. And we yeah. we can still use them. Absolutely. And, one, and, and Ryan Gosling, which, what's interesting, he's on the shortlist, Ryan Gosling, and he is... Uh, he's a Mormon, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. not active, but he's uh, he's a less uh, a less active member. But he grew up in the church. Yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, so we'll see. <laughs> well, you know, the next uh, few, right. few months will hopefully tell us. Any other uh, things on the horizon in the, for the future? <clears throat> well, we're you know we're definitely still working on animation. There's a live action series being oh, really? discussed. Yeah, a live action TV series is very much. Uh, being discussed um, and um, like I said and there's there's neat things coming out there's now there's an action figure coming there's um, all kinds of things like keychains and magnets and mugs and of course t-shirts and all that kind of stuff coming out all the merchandise yeah all the merchandise is starting to come out yeah. um, action most, figures and yeah, all that stuff yeah well be super. but when the feature film or the action or the TV series comes out, then there'll be a whole new wave of product, and it'll be oh yeah, it'll be bigger, bigger scale definitely by then. But the one fun thing that's coming out soon is Captain Canuck, one hundred percent Canadian maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, that'll soon be in stores. That's awesome. <laughs> it'll be in all the. It'll be pretty well in all of those duty free stores. So Americans yeah. can buy it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> at the duty free store before they go back into the states. You know what I mean? That's right, and, yeah, yeah. That's, and Canadians too. Of course. That's one of the things that you you have to buy on the way out is yeah. your maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, your Captain Canuck maple syrup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So perfect. Anyway, so there's that's great. A lot of people are excited about that. Apparently, uh, I heard a lot of the duty free people were really excited about the idea of Captain Canuck maple syrup. So they all <laughs> knew course. about it. And, you know, all these duty free, these people in the duty-free stores, they, they all knew about Captain Canuck and were excited to, to see it that was coming. So, so that's going to be kind of fun.